So greetings everybody. So a bit of a milestone today. Terry and I celebrated our 49th anniversary. We got married on Friday the 13th of December 1974. And uh, it was one of those deals where we decided that uh, uh, let's get married in a couple weeks, okay? And it turned out that a couple weeks was Friday the 13th. Neither one of us had looked at the date, but it certainly turned out to be one of my luckiest, if not the luckiest day uh, in my life. Uh, and speaking of milestones, hey, we crossed over 20,000 subscribers, which is just shocking to me a bit. And I just want to say thanks for everybody that subscribed. And if you haven't yet, that I hope hope you will. And thank you to all the channel members for your support. It's just, just uh, very heartwarming for me. So I wanted to give you just a bit of an update of what we've got going on. So I was hoping to get a couple train hops in, but if you've followed the channel from way back, uh, Terry and I, you know, lived in an RV and we were in Colorado during the beginning of COVID and she had some heart issues cropped up. Well, every once in a while stuff gets a little bit out of whack. And so it, you know, take some work from the doctors to get things straightened back out. So she was having to go about once a week and I take her, of course, to the doctor. And so uh, anyway, they've got that straightened out, I think, and I'm, hopefully we'll be back to normal in that regard. <laughs> and then to add more to medical misery, I am undergoing a treatment, a chemical sort of peel deal using fluorouracil. And what this stuff actually is, is a, an old chemo drug. I don't have cancer, at least that I know of, but they discovered that it was curing uh, cancer of the skin, certain types of skin cancers. And so uh, basically you rub this stuff on twice a day for two weeks and it tears up any of the damaged skin and that ends up then peeling off and being replaced with new skin. And so it's pretty painful and uncomfortable. It's a, like I say, it's a two week process to apply it. And then another week or two recovering from it. And you look like hell and it hurts. So my face will, will be hurting me <laughs> as well as you. So anyway, I'm starting that right after Christmas. And that, so it's going to be the end of January, I'm afraid, before I can actually get a train hop in. You know, knock on wood, we'll, we'll pull that off. But anyway, thanks again for all of your support and subscribing and all that stuff. And I have had some people ask me to do a gear video. And so that's what this video is. Just an update on the gear that I take with me. It's changed a little bit. And finally, the last thing is that I will uh, give away the phone tether, the Night Eyes phone tether here shortly. So make sure and take a chance if you haven't yet and enter uh, by clicking the link in the description and see if you can't win a phone tether. Uh, and with that, on with the gear video. And thanks everybody for watching. Well, if you'd like to know why I tend to lose weight out train hopping it's because i carry way too much shit <laughs> and i'm going to pare it down this time a little bit i think uh, but anyway these are my two packs that i choose from the one on the left i think is 70 liters and it's just a bit too big but it's kind of nice in regards to i can fit all my stuff in there without compressing much the other one i think is 50 liters it's a Scout 3400. They're both Teton products. Uh, that one is just a bit too small and I have to kind of smash my camera gear into it. But it's compact enough that uh, I like it better. So I kind of blew it when I jumped to size. But, you know, I don't want to buy another pack just for that. So we'll see. We'll see. There's some advantages to both of them. But here is the real problem. <laughs> I take too much stuff along. But let me run through some of these things. So first of all, uh, this extra knife I used to carry is going by the wayside. 
I have uh, a couple of knives that I bring along just as, as spares and then uh, I've got some extra earbuds, a pin, and then uh, some spray mace that I carry just in case and then I carry flashlights so the the two newest ones uh, John and Dave sent me one from Australia and the Emolent one uh, those go along and then I had bought a pack of cheap flashlights that came like four to a pack uh, and I just stuff those every which way so that I've always got a flashlight if I need it just easily accessible I don't have to think about where I put it or anything else and you know they don't add a whole lot that cordage there I can use for tying up a tarp or anything else but it's it's also used to start fires so this thing just creates a spark and uh, what it does then is uh, you charge it up and it just creates an arc across it that will basically, uh, and I don't remember how you turn it on, there's the button. And you can see that, uh, and I've tested it on paper. And man, it definitely, it definitely will start a fire. So you use that cordage if you need to and you can start it on fire and it, use it to help uh, start your your main fire but I carry that I don't don't haven't ever used it out in the field but there's a couple things that a guy has got to be careful of and that is getting wet and suffering from uh, hypothermia and so being you know being able to stay dry and start fires is super important so I carry two lighters plus this uh, as well as a flint type fire starter in case of uh, in case of emergency. Now I gotta tell you that trying to start a fire with sparks is a pain but it's doable but this is only for absolute emergencies. You know basically I stuff all this stuff into my pack in different places. This hat, my trapper's hat, is a wintertime only hat uh, I won't be taking that with me this time. Uh, so uh, that one is just one I use when it's really cold. And it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, these, these hats, it's real rabbit fur. Very nice on there. So anyway, the other stuff here on the table, this is just, uh, and this is what I put it all in, but this is just your basic uh, toiletry sort of things, toothpaste shaving cream, my meds, a little deodorant. Uh, I use in, in, uh, I use an antiperspirant deodorant combination, which lasts quite a while. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just little things like uh, a pair of tweezers, uh, you know, a spoon, extra earplugs. I take earplugs along. Uh, so I usually have several pairs of earplugs, a couple pairs of or a couple sets of earbuds to go in different devices, my phone, etc. Uh, but now let's go to some of the more important things. So my sleeping bag, this is one thing that I recently invested a little more money in than my other gear. This is a sleeping bag from REI. It's a mummy bag and it is incredible it smashes down to almost nothing and uh, so i can actually keep it inside a pocket on the pack and not have to have it strapped on the outside so that's a piece of critical gear that goes with me everywhere then i have a tarp my shoes, of course, don't go in the pack, but these are uh, a Merrill brand, I believe, hiking boot. And uh, I take along blister stuff, but I've never gotten a blister from any of my hiking boots. You know, good quality boots don't do that to you. But I do take uh, some blister stuff along in my medical kit. Then uh, my wife just bought me for my birthday, which is coming up, 
day after tomorrow, uh, she bought me six pairs of merino wool socks. And the reason that wool socks are important, one is for comfort, but two is that anything that's got significant wool content will maintain your body heat when it's wet. And you know the thing that's going to kill you on uh, on a you know, on a train ride is is getting hypothermia because you got wet and you're in the wind and it's cold or heat one or the other you know but uh, anyway she bought those for me so I'm glad to have those to take along uh, I generally take about three pair of extra underwear and then my normal extra clothes so I'll take a flannel shirt this time. This shirt next to my flannel shirt there is a special heat shirt for the heat. It's long sleeve, lightweight t-shirt sort of thing, but it works in either the winter or the summer. But in the summertime, it's fantastic to wick uh, moisture away from you and keep you cool. So it makes your sweat much more effective. Uh, I'm taking a pair of shorts this time because I'll have my jeans on. And then some of the other things that I take are, uh, I take a little first aid kit. It's got bandages and stuff in there. Then I have duct tape, a little roll of duct tape. Uh, I take some Lysol wipes if I need to get cleaned up or something. Uh, that little yellow envelope there is the blister pack with little little stick on blister protectors. Then of course my coffee cup and then I take a pot along for heating stuff up in. Inside of there is where my where I store my burner and butane fuel. Then I've got a key for water and then I put an extra water outside of the jug that I carry I put that inside my pack in a pocket in my pack so I've always got at least another option for water if I happen to break or lose my main water the orange deal there is a blow up air pad that one is heavier than I like but it's the only one that survived multiple train rides I ruin those things uh, regularly and so I don't recommend uh, blow up pads for train hopping, but uh, that one has worked well for me. Uh, and I also take a pair of coveralls along, and that's so that uh, you know you can keep your clothes somewhat clean so that when you get off a train, you don't look like you've been on a train quite so much. I carry a hoodie with me, that's my Rico Abreu black hoodie and then my fly rod and a fly reel which i often take along i'm not sure if i'll take it uh, saturday when i go or not uh, we'll see there's a little pair of binoculars down there that i usually have with me as well then i have a frog togs rain suit which works but believe me it's not built to last on a train hop it uh, doesn't do the trick long term but it works to get you by short term uh, I also carry a waterproof bag and the only reason I carry that that yellow thing there is because I like to have something completely waterproof that I can trust to put electronics in so I'll put my uh, camera uh, in there my camera gear in there sometimes I'll put my shoes in there uh, just anything that I want to make sure doesn't get doesn't get wet then uh, I've got the standard accordion backpack backpacking pad which seems to be ubiquitous among train riders and the reason that one's popular is it doesn't ever go flat <laughs> it's pretty thin too but but it doesn't go flat and so it takes a lot of abuse then one of my newer things is I got a special bivy and uh, I won't take it out of the pack now, but I'll put a picture up of it. This is uh, a helium bivy. It wasn't particularly cheap, but I've had it several years now. And the difference between it and a regular bivy is that it's got a pole 
system a hoop that you make out of a fiberglass pole and it keeps the bivy up off you around where your head is so it's kind of like a, a miniature tent in a way let's see what else do i have in here oh a little tripod a little portable tripod in case you want to set the camera up i don't use that as much as i thought i would but i take it along anyway then here in the winter time i will take this pair of long underwear and those are a special thin synthetic material i can't find them anymore i got several pair from lands in because i wear them skiing but it's a union suit style of long underwear and the reason i like the union suit is it doesn't come untucked in the back and for skiing that's important when you crash you don't want to get snow stuffed down your pants or up your back and so uh, but because of the way that material is and how lightweight and thin it is it's very comfortable so if it's the least bit cold i'll often put that on and instead of wearing maybe a jacket or one of my hoodies i'll just wear that under my shirt and i'm just super comfortable even in the wind so that will probably be going with me on this next hop then i've got things like stocking caps and i usually just carry a few extra uh, neck gaiters um, you know if you lose your hat which isn't uncommon it blows off or something you can always throw the neck gaiter on and use it as kind of a bandana head head covering sort of thing keep the sun off of you where a lot of my space and weight gets taken up is in electronics so i've got chargers cables uh, i even take with me which i i know sounds ridiculous but i have a little tiny computer raspberry pi computer and what i do with that raspberry pi is i will copy my video footage sometimes onto a sand disk which is this little little portable disk here solid state drive basically is what it amounts to i will copy my files onto that solid state drive and that way i can just clean off the discs that go in the camera and have additional recording space if i need it and that uh you know is is does come into play at times when uh, when i'm on the road for an extended period of time and so you build up a lot of footage and you, you just don't want to lose it and uh, that way i can either back it up or or i can store it on there and clean off the cards so that they're empty then my drone that other bag is where i stuff all the camera gear I use two scanners uh, and I don't always use the radio but I like having it with me uh, because it's two-way and in an emergency you could talk to a train crew if you had to uh, you know if you notice something on the train or whatever uh, you could talk to them if you had to in a pinch and then I take a regular scanner the Bearcat uh, BC 35 XLT I think that is and uh, it's uh, or pardon me BC 75 XLT uh, you know it's got the rail bands all built into it and I take a bunch of extra cables for charging these two chargers here are for my I take two of them because it takes a long time to charge up a, a camera battery for my camcorder and the camcorder is my favorite camera to use uh, on the on the rails it does a good job at night if i set it right it can do real night vision uh, but which is very short range or i can set the camera to do you know set the aperture and whatnot to do a better job of night video when there's a little bit of light so a lot of what i have are, are extra batteries and just the stuff to charge everything I use a special cable in my iPhone that lets me charge it as well as have headphones set up on it uh, so that when I'm on a bus or something like that I can be charging it while I'm using it and then I take 
regular glasses and sunglasses, both of those prescription versions. I take them along. I rarely wear either one, but you know, once in a while, uh, it's handy to have on there. And then, of course, I've got my water jug and newly incorporated, speaking of birthday gifts, my wife, this is how smart she is, she bought me a new windbreaker. And she bought a black one. She knew exactly what would work on a train. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go she's looking out for me get me a black windbreaker so I stuff all of this in one place or another of course I'm wearing my hiking boots they don't go inside anything and uh, I end up with somewhere around 50 pounds that I'm carrying as a rule which is is probably a lot I, I try to get it down more like 40 pounds uh, and we'll see where this ends up on this particular trip because I am probably going to filter some of this stuff out. I don't think I need six flashlights. <laughs> and uh, I did get a new a new knife that I carry in my pocket. And uh, because of some security, I had to give up a knife at a concert one day. And they weren't able to keep it for me. They tried, but someone walked off with it. But this one's pretty cool smith and wesson knife so i can get rid of an extra knife or two <laughs> but anyway that is my gear right now and uh, i'll get it packed up here today so you can see how it all actually fits into the pack or on the outside of it and uh, get an idea how i manage with all this crap anyway Thanks for watching.